Welcome to Osteology classes. Today's topic is on Osteology of Pelvis. So, pelvis is the ring of bones formed by two hip bones, the sacrum and coccyx. So, here in this image, we can see the ring of bones formed by two hip bones on each side. It's the right hip bone. Left hip bone, the sacrum, sacrum is present in the midline and below the sacrum articulates with the coccyx. So these bones are united by four joints. The two synovial sacroiliac joints which are present on the posterior late superior laterally. So, here are the So, sacroiliac joint is a synovial joint and most stable synovial joint in our body which is present on each side of the sacrum where the ala of the sacrum articulates with the uh, helium. And the two fibrocartilaginous joints one is the pubic symphysis present anterior inferiorly so the other is the sacrococcygeal joint which is also a fibrocartilaginous joint and where the coccyx articulates with the sacrum posterior inferiorly to form sacrococcygeal joint so bony pelvis is divided in, subdivided into pelvic girdle Pelvic girdle is formed by the two hip bones which is the appendicular skeleton which connects the spine to the lower limb. So, these two hip bones, right and left hip bones forms the appendicular skeleton that is the pelvic girdle and pelvic region of spine that is sacrum and coccyx. So, the sacrum and coccyx forms the axial skeleton. Pelvic cavity. It is divided by the pelvic rim or iliopectineal line into two parts. So, iliopectineal line is this line. Which separates the pelvic cavity into the upper one is the greater pelvis or false pelvis which is present above the pelvic rim. So, this is the pelvic brim and below the pelvic rim is the lesser or true pelvis. So, lesser or true pelvis present below the pelvic brim. Pelvic brim which is otherwise called pelvic inlet which leads into the lesser pelvis and it is the superior rim of the pelvic cavity and it is bounded posteriorly by the promontory of the sacrum. So, anterior border of the promontory of sacrum. So, posteriorly by the promontory of the sacrum and the anterior border of the ala of the sacrum. This is the ala of the sacrum. So, this forms the sacral part which is on the posterior aspect of pelvic inlet. So, anteriorly from the middle it is formed by the pubic symphysis. On each side of the pubic synthesis, there is pubic crust and pectineal line. And laterally, it continues with a line we can see forming a margin of pelvic brim that is the arcuate line. So, pubic part of arcuate line. And then this arcuate line continues with the ileum as the linear terminalis. So, the linear terminalis includes the pubic crest 
iliopectineal line and arcuate line. So pubic crest, iliopectineal line that is the line in between the ilium and the pubis and also the arcuate line. All these together considered as linear terminalis. Linear terminalis is crossed by the ureter, gonadal vessels and medial sacral vessels, iliolumbar vessels. So here in this image we can see the gonadal vessels. And it is also crossed by the iliolumbar vessels. It supply the ilium and the lumbar region and middle sacral vessels. So these are the blood vessels but here in this image I can show you only the gonadal vessels and middle sacral vessels which crosses the pelvic brim or the inlet of pelvis. The nerves which crosses the linear terminalis are uh, lumbosacral trunk. And it is crossed by the obturator nerve. And it is also crossed by the spermatic cord in males, round ligament in of uterus in females. And it is crossed by the sympathetic trunk. And it is also crossed by the suspensory ligament of ovary in females. So these are the few structures which are related to the pelvic inlet. That is to be specific it is related to the linear terminalis of pelvic inlet or pelvic brim. Pelvic outlet. Pelvic outlet is a diamond shaped aperture bounded posteriorly by the sacrum and coccyx. So here we can see on the posterior aspect sacrum with the coccyx and laterally by the ischial tuberosities and sacrotuberous ligaments. And the ligament connecting the sacrum and the ischial tuberosity, these ligaments are called as sacrotuberous ligaments. And anteriorly by the pubic symphysis and it is also related to the rami of the pubis and ischia. This is ischia pubic ramus. and ischial tuberosity is projection from the ischia. So these are the boundaries of pelvic outlet. So pelvic outlet is a diamond shaped aperture bounded posteriorly by sacrum and coccyx, laterally by the ischial tuberosities and sacrotuberous ligaments and anteriorly by the pubic synthesis, arcuate pubic ligament and rami of pubis and ischia. And this pelvic outlet, it is closed by pelvic diaphragm and urogenital diaphragm. So posteriorly, here is the anal opening and here are the openings of urogenital structures. So that is the opening of vagina and urethra in female because this is a female pelvic outlet. So anal opening is surrounded by the pelvic diaphragm. which forms the uh, floor of the pelvis that is uh, pelvic diaphragm is formed by the muscles which uh, prevent the prolapse of the organs present in the pelvic cavity and uh, anteriorly it is formed by the urogenital diaphragm. So the muscles around this urogenital structures are urogenital diaphragm. So that is about the pelvic outlet. Regarding the greater pelvis or false pelvis, it is located superiorly to the pelvic inlet. So here is the pelvic inlet. 
so anteriorly there are no bones forming the greater pelvis greater pelvis it is uh, superiorly to the pelvic kidney and contains the distal part of the intestines and it uh, is bounded by the alveolar of ileum on each side and also it is related to fourth to fifth lumbar vertebra so posteriorly it is formed by lumbar vertebra which are above the sacrum so l4 l5 and the base of the sacrum posteriorly so the base of the sacrum also takes part in the greater pelvis the anterior border of the greater pelvis is completed by the inferior part of anterior abdominal wall and posteriorly the greater pelvis communicates with the peritoneal cavity and inferiorly the greater pelvis communicates with the lesser cavity or lesser pelvis through the pelvic inlet so the lesser pelvis it is bounded by the either side by the ilio ischial complex so the uh, complex between the ilium and the ischium so this part which is called as ilio ischial complex and posteriorly by the sacro coccygeal complex so this is the sacro coccygeal complex on the posterior aspect and the pubic bones pubic symphysis and the rami form the anterior inferior border so we can see the inferiorly the pubic symphysis and pubic bones on each side so the lesser pelvis is bounded all around by the bones unlike greater pelvis whereas in the greater pelvis anteriorly uh, there are no bones forming the greater pelvis only the anterior abdominal wall takes part in the formation of greater pelvis after about 9 months of growth and development of the baby in the uterus the fetus is ready to born and this is an exciting thing it risky the series of events that require very specific and coordinated actions the details of mechanisms of labor required the fetal part are smaller than the pelvic diameter and the presenting fetal parts engage or enter the pelvis appropriately so if the fetal head is too big the pelvic diameters are too small or the fetal part is not oriented appropriately that is the long axis of the head should be in the transverse plane and then it uh, may be impossible for vaginal delivery to take place so the the series of events which happens during the labor it is very important and associated with the measurement of pelvis and also the position of fetus so therefore it is important for managing obstetricians to determine if the expectant mother pelvis is adequate to deliver fetus additionally the size of the fetus should also be monitored and compared with the pelvic diameters to prevent the risk of cephalo pelvic disproportion at the time of delivery so let us talk about the different types of pelvises gynecoid pelvis common among the females in western civilization so here in this image we can see a gynecoid pelvis where the inlet is slightly over oval in shape along the transverse axis so we can see the inlet is almost oval like along the transverse axis and ischial spines are blunt and do not protrude into the cavity so we can see a blunt ischial spines which does not protrude into the pelvic cavity and oval shaped uh, pelvic inlet and also the sacrum is broad and has a deep concavity so the con the sacrum is broad and concave so which is ideal for a uh, delivery so gynecoid pelvis are most ideal uh, kind of pelvis for normal delivery the next variety is the android pelvis android pelvis is most common in male it is called as male type pelvis and inlet of the pelvis if you see it appears to be heart shaped which is having a large sacral promontory so we can see here it is heart like with a 
large sacral promontory and also the ischial spines are conical and protrude into the cavity so ischial spines are protruding in, into the cavity and we can see the sacrum is slightly curved so in turn sacrum is curved inside and this is ideal for the attachment of bulky muscles so that is the reason it is called as android pelvis android pelvis is seen in females also the next type of pelvis is anthropoid pelvis features of both android and gynecoid pelvis the inlet is oval so the inlet is appears to be oval the inlet is oval the ischial spines ischial spines are blunt sacrum is long narrow and less curved than a gynecoid pelvis so it can facilitate delivery but high risk of obstructed labor so this type of pelvis is called as anthropoid pelvis the next is the platypeloid pelvis called as contracted pelvis where the inlet and the ischial spines similar to those seen in the gynecoid pelvis but sacrum is slightly curved so sacrum is slightly curved here and whereas the inlet and ischial spines are similar to gynecoid pelvis means the ischial spines are blunt and it appears the transverse diameter is more when compared to anterior posterior diameter in platypeloid pelvis so the important features which uh, differentiates male and female pelvis so the first one is the subpubic angle the subpubic angle is the angle below the pubic symphysis where the two inferior rami of the pubis converge here at the pubis so this is the subpubic angle so the subpubic angle is around 70 degrees in males and in females it is around 90 to 100 degrees so the subpubic angle is more in females and less in males and next important difference is the false pelvis false pelvis is uh, narrow and deep in males so this is the false pelvis posteriorly bounded by L4, L5, and anteriorly it is deficient. Where on each side we can see the ala of ischium. So the uh, till the pelvic vein, till here, till the inlet of pelvis. So this part, the greater pelvis, it is narrow and deeper in males, and it is wide and shallow in females. pelvic inlet it is mostly android type in males means it is heart shaped so pelvic inlet appears to be heart shaped in males and whereas in females it is mostly transversely oval sacrum sacrum is long narrow with smoothly curved pelvic surface in males whereas in females it is short wide with abruptly curved pelvic surface near the lower end and true pelvis that is the pelvic cavity it is narrow and deep in males whereas it is roomy and shallow in females so these are the major differences to differentiate between male and female pelvises pelvic fractures pelvic fracture refers to disruption of the bones and joints of the hip these injuries are usually caused by the high velocity or crush injury and the gen, uh, that generate uh, enough force to break this robust bone so there are a lot of uh, large blood vessels and highly vascular organs in the pelvis that can be damaged during these accidents as a result 
there is a significant risk of massive blood loss and even death if these life threatening emergencies are not addressed immediately so the mechanism of injury will determine the type and classification of pelvic fracture so i am going to show few examples one first one is the antero posterior compression ap compressions the fourth is applied along the antero posterior plane leading to diastasis that is the separation of symphysis pubis so the symphysis pubis may get separated and these forces or may also be transferred to sacroiliac joint further destabilizing the pelvis so sacroiliac joint also we can see dislocation causing destabilizing the pelvis those factors that involve disruption of pubic symphysis are called as open book fractures they are called as open book fractures the next variety is the lateral compressions so the force is applied laterally resulting in inward rotation of the pelvis so the sacroiliac joint uh, that is the sacroiliac region and uh, pubic rami are most uh, susceptible to the fractures in these injuries so in lateral injuries sacroiliac region and also the pubic rami so here we can see the pubic rami got fractured so the sacroiliac region and the pubic rami are most susceptible to the fracture in these injuries vertical shear means the force is applied craniopodally or the vice versa resulting the vertical displacement of hip bones the pubic symphysis is a useful landmark when performing supra pubic aspirations or creating supra pubic cystotomy so the supra pubic aspiration is an invasive sterile procedure by which the urine is aspirated from the bladder through the anterior abdominal wall the needle is inserted in the midline of the anterior abdominal wall about two fingers breadth above the pubic symphysis so the pubic uh, supra pubic cystotomy or supra pubic catheter placement is surgically uh, created communication between the bladder and the skin so this procedure is used to drain the urine from the bladder in the individuals with obstructed bladder outlets so in the individuals with obstructed bladder outlets like uh, benign or malignant prostatomegaly or traumatic ureteral injury uh, are a few examples which may cause obstructive bladder outlets so this procedure is used to drain the urine from the bladder in individuals with obstructed bladder outlet so these are the few clinical correlations which are associated with the osteology of pelvis so let's see some differences between male and female pelvis again so the female pelvic inlet is oval in shape whereas the male pelvic inlet is slightly heart shaped the angle between the lower pubic arches which is called as subpubic angle it is greater than 90 degrees in women and that is around 90 to 100 and it is less than 90 degrees in men that is around 70 degrees the wings of the ilium are broader and larger in women than in men and uh, even if you see the shape of obturator foramen the obturator foramen is uh, appears to be triangular in uh, women and it is oval in men and uh, even the greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch especially the greater sciatic notch it appears to be more widened in women than in the men so these are the few differences where we can differentiate male pelvis from female pelvis so with this i complete the osteology of pelvis thank you